Hugh Hefner, American Playboy, Saint or Sinner, the tales of his life on American Chronicles. This two-speed cordless drill battery pack and charger, just $29.99. And Ace 25 Light Outdoor Lights, that's only $6.29. Looks right to me. Ace is the place for me. This is Tropicana Pure Premium. No other major brand of juice comes closer to this than Pure Premium. Now this is Tropicana Pure Premium Home Style for those with fond memories of Mom's juice. Home Style is filled with juicy bits of real orange, like Mom's. So if you like the taste of juicy bits, no other major brand comes closer to this than Pure Premium Home Style. Either way, you just can't pick a better juice. Spend Sunday with the Freeman family. Now who put the empty milk carton back into the refrigerator? Must have been one of the white people. <laughs> True colors. Oh, Ronald. Another croissant. It ain't the Brady Bunch. Sunday. Sunday. At 30 years of age. Chris Peterson is spending his first night away from home. <laughs> Get a light Sunday on Fox. Playmate of the Year. A fantasy to millions of Playboy readers. But to Hugh Hefner, she is his reality. For she accomplished what America believed was impossible. A lot of things in my life have seemed rather like magic. And that is no more true than in the relationship with Kimberly. I got married, and I got married not just because she wanted to, I got married because I wanted to. Hugh Marston Hefner. 
with a castle as a home and a dream for a life. For years, the idol of so many. Once again, the husband of one, the father of another. Has he found contentment at last? For many years, I felt that I could find it in a succession of uh, romantic relationships. I found that the, the real answer to that, eventually in time, is something much more traditional. It's the love of one very special woman and, and a home and family very close to the full circle uh, and back again to my own Methodist beginnings. A descendant of pilgrim life at Plymouth Rock, he was born into a strict religious home. There were some hugs, few kisses, and the word sex was unspoken. He escaped into dreams, dreams of being someone else. First on paper, then on film. He wanted to be so many things, to be an actor, a creator, an artist. There were so many possibilities. But dreams are for children, he reasoned. The Puritan pull was too strong. He must grow up, find the right girl, find the right job, and live happily ever after. I expected marriage to be the fulfillment of all my romantic dreams. It was the opposite. I felt as if the dreams had ended. And the, those first years of marriage were a feeling of uh, having to put all the dreams away. And uh, when I started the magazine, I recaptured the dreams. The magazine began in 1953. There were not certainly in that time frame a lot of other voices publicly saying the things that I believe. What we tried to say was, there can be, in a young man, a bit of the playboy in all of us. It's about the play and pleasure of life, the very parts that our Puritan heritage repressed and rejected. When I was growing up during the Depression, I felt I'd missed the party, looking back at all those images related to the 20s. And I think that a part of my life and the creation of Playboy is really creating that party that I miss. Playboy magazine. Born to a time when right was right and anything else was easy to call wrong. Hefner challenged the prevailing thinking with the publication of Playboy's very first issue. We have a great many people of varying ages uh, who are adult and members of society who uh, are not married. Now, it seems to me that we've got to develop some kind of social sexual morality for these people that is quite different than what uh, we've had in the past with uh, organized religion, which has taken the attitude, traditionally, of simply, thou shalt not. <sighs> I believe, quite frankly, that the thing that made Playboy so popular was not the new pictures. It was the new pictures in a context that said something symbolically. It said, sex is OK. These are nice girls. This is the girl next door.
My name is Hugh Hefner. I'm 35 years of age, and I'm editor-publisher of Playboy magazine. I started with a personal investment of $600. In eight years, I've built an empire worth $20 million. It happened fast. The marriage failed. The magazine succeeded. The very real pleasure is in the doing. The money that we're fortunate enough to make from the magazine goes primarily back into, uh, almost exclusively back into the magazine itself. He worked seven days a week, 16 hours a day. It was his whole life. After having spent uh, most of the 50s behind the desk creating the fantasy, I really started living out the fantasy. And uh, in a way rather similar to what I did in the last two years of high school, I reinvented myself. Uh, and that was the Mr. Playboy period. When I look back at the footage, I can see that reinvention. A very pompous kid. But behind the pomposity, I was running as fast as I could to get away from the life I didn't want to live, the life that I saw in my parents' life. And I just wanted to turn myself and my life into something else. Playboy is, is uh, going in the teacup business. Starting as of the first of the year, there will be keys very much like this in the hands of members throughout the country who will belong to an exclusive, very private club for men, drawing its personality very much from the magazine itself. All the props were in place. 35 Playboy clubs, a customized jet, a fleet of limousines, a television show, and the playground of Hefner's empire, the Chicago mansion. Hefner was basically saying, hey listen, we're having a party here at the Playboy Mansion. You can all come to the party if you bought the magazine. But in the end, the only person who really came to the party was Hefner himself. As far as the women were concerned, it felt like you were in a real, real high-class sorority house with the most beautiful, you know, women on campus. And the campus happened to be Hefner's campus, and he was the president of the university. An obsession. A dream. Hugh Hefner was living a life only few could imagine but millions bought into. An empire founded on so simple a concept. Hefner's genius was basically the realization that men would pay money to buy a magazine because they like to see women with their shirts off. In a constricted social age in America, Hefner let him see something that hadn't been available in a, quote, classy, unquote, form before, and uh, they ate it up. Melty tasting cereals. I want a cereal that tastes so good. You want to eat it. Your mini wheat. Dad, these are good for you. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> no salt, no cholesterol, fat free. I can't hear you. All right, wrong number. <laughs> Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. Surprise, they're good for you. Got lots of fiber, too. I didn't hear that. <laughs> I heard that. Now, every time you use the American Express card, you could win a trip anywhere to do anything. 
because American Express is giving away $10,000 dream weekends. One a day, every day for the rest of the year. Every time you use the card, you have another chance to win. Only with the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Sunday, see the world with Men on Vacation. Our next stop was Sweden, best known for its beautiful buxom blondes. Hated it. In living color, catch an all-new episode Sunday. Bottom up. Sunday. I just heard from the women in the neighborhood that there's a new stud in town. Al Bundy becomes the neighborhood hunk. <laughs> did they say anything about my butt? Did they? Did they? Did they? They liked it. Did they? <laughs> yes! How can this be? It's an ass. Inferno. Find out on an all-new Married with Children, Sunday. This weekend, your cable TV installers have their work cut out for them. They're making all kinds of great deals. And this is the hard part. They'll be there within eight hours of the time you call. Eight hours or... buy you a Thanksgiving turkey. This offer ends Sunday, so call now. Operators and turkeys are standing by. Is Hugh Hefner a sinner or a saint? That is a question for future generations to answer. But in our time, he is a man who spoke new thoughts. And in the 60s, he was a force of nature who changed America. Our society traditionally has pitted mind and body against one another, has suggested continually that the devil is in the flesh. The real underlying premise of Playboy has been that um, that all of that's a lot of nonsense. You suggest that what I really have is kind of a, a view of society in which there are no rules, uh, personal or otherwise. Of course, that's not the kind of thing that I have in mind at all. There are certain things that are and must remain the personal responsibilities of people. This doesn't mean that all of these things are good. It means that in a free society, there are certain kinds of things that you cannot and should not try to legislate. Willing to come out here with a cotton tail attached to your rear end. Playboy exploits sex like Sports Illustrated exploits sports. You don't seem to understand that the deeds that men are being moved to by Playboy is a healthier attitude towards sex. In 1963, Hefner is charged with publishing obscene material. The jury reached no decision. But the court of public opinion continues the debate to this day. There are some elements in society that continually feel as though free and open expression, particularly as it relates to human sexuality, is something very dangerous and something that should be curtailed and censored. But beyond that, the very fact that we focus primarily on sex, the fact that our own Supreme Court believes that sex is the one and only area of human behavior, of human communication, that is not protected by the First Amendment, says something very sick and sad about ourselves. In a free society, immoral behavior is judged in the heart of the beholder. In Hugh Hefner's heart, racism, violence, and war are the real immorality. March 6th, 1985, the pressure becomes too great. Because I couldn't read. I literally lost the ability to read. any dizziness, minor uh, paralysis on the right side. Embolism in the, on the left, left, 
with some speech impairment. I also couldn't clearly articulate what I had just said. It was very scary. But what I did is, um, I suppose, a reflection of who I am as a person, which is that if there's trouble, then I want to be on the scene and I want to be in control. So I went to L.A. and I met with the doctor and I participated in the decisions about treatment. Uh, but it was a terrible time. <laughs> safe surroundings. The mansion becomes his retreat. The continuing pursuit of the life that I lived was trying to prove something to myself. And uh, I used that stroke. I called it a stroke of luck. I said that this gives me permission to put down the luggage of my life. And I used it in that way. And uh, I have found a, 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 a peace and a, and a uh, satisfaction uh, in, in the years since that I have never known before. It's hard to let go. His creative impressions still influence every issue, but daily decisions have passed to the next generation. Um, I think it sort of emerged as the best way to go forward, as a way of not putting the company on hold while some search went on for an outside person. I wasn't a newcomer, which had an advantage both in terms of my knowing what needed to be done and in terms of people trusting me. Uh, and it was just something that we both felt comfortable with. Gee, it's great being out late, walking baby back home. Arm in arm over meadow and farm, walking baby back home. While I give her a smile, snuggle her cheek to my chest. We started a pet, that's when I get her cookie powder all over my vest. After I kind of straighten my tie, she wants to borrow my comb. One kiss, then we continue again. Walking, baby, I don't mean maybe. Walking, my baby. Would I honestly say to myself that in all those years, with all those adventures, what for me was a celebration of my life, could I say with certainty that someone wasn't hurt by it? I couldn't say that with certainty. I didn't know. Reflection? A change of values, or a maturing of the man. When I met him, I remember thinking that there were going to be a lot of naked women around. And there was. A lot of girls. A lot, a lot of um, girlfriends. And just exactly what a playboy is. But only he has lived his life very openly, his playboy lifestyle. She was the one girl, even though there'd been no indication of any interest between us, the one girl in the, the last couple of years that had really struck me and, and impressed me. And within about three months, I knew the unthinkable, that I wanted to marry her. The party now is, if I were going to express it in nautical terms, uh, I have ridden the waves and am now in what I would consider a safe harbor. Life in this Shangri-La is beyond common experience. But what has eluded him until now is such a common dream. Contentment. It's the autumn years for Hugh Hefner. To the surprise of almost everyone who knows him, and to himself, he is savoring this season most of all. So much of one's life ordinarily is lived for other people. And life is so short. The only thing you really have that's really precious is your time, is the life itself, is 
is if you recognize that if you really enjoy life as I have, The, the, the hours and the days are the most special, precious thing in the world. And uh, there's nothing I could urge anybody to do uh, that would make more sense than to live your life every day at a time and really savor it and enjoy it. But so many of us, and even though I've always had that view, I was running like everybody else. And uh, we all do it. We think in terms of destinations and accomplishing things, etc. And the destination is what? Death. Uh, it's a train trip, and the train is moving very fast. You look out the window, you don't see anything. And you ought to get off the train and walk around. It's, um, it's almost like cheating. You get a good shave, and you don't get the, the, the negative side effects. I'm very pleased with the Norelco. It's close. I don't have any, no, no stubble, no, no, uh, feels like a baby's butt. Now, Norelco's patented lift and cut system has been improved to lift each hair and cut it even closer without the blades touching your skin. The idea of shaving is to get a, you know, smooth appearance, smooth skin. And if you're going to do it, you might as well be comfortable doing it. The new Norelco, a new level of closeness and comfort. <laughs> isn't easy. Getting a long-distance call through on AT&T is, even from non-AT&T public phones. Just dial 10-ATT-0 and the phone number. AT&T. 10-ATT-0. Just to make getting through your day a little easier. AT&T. How can we help you? It seems that every time you turn around these days, another pain reliever with ibuprofen in it is comparing itself to Tylenol. But you know what they can't say? They can't say they're gentler than Tylenol, because they're not. Tylenol won't irritate your stomach the way ibuprofen sometimes can. That's a medical fact. And is it any wonder that today...